Shalom and welcome to Sivir Seftara. This year is entitled The Greatest Show on Earth, Part 2. We described in the first year the wonder of God's creation. We should be so excited for everything that we encounter in the Torah world, of course, and in God's creation as well. Physics, science, gravity, setting the body parts, the liver, the heart. Every day, more discoveries in the world about the body, plants, animals. The size of the universe, the distance, gravity, so much going on. We should be wowed. Why aren't we? Why is that a rare person that's just walking around with goosebumps, trying to make sense of the world? So I wonder if Pasha Breach just gives us an insight. First thing we see in Paragimel. Now Hash goes up to the woman, what can we eat, what can we not? She says, oh, we cannot eat the Eitzadan, and we can't even touch it. Then it says they have a dialogue, and then the snake convinces her it's it's could die worth it to eat, and says, she sees it, it looks very pleasant, very tempting, and she gives in. And then God says, what's going on? Man, what are you doing? Adam, he said, well, she gave it to me. The woman you gave me, she gave it to me. And then God says to the woman, what's going on? Well, the Nachash, he incited me to do this. I think there's three lessons to learn here. And I'm wondering if those lessons in Parsha Bracious could teach us about researching the world and appreciating God's wonders. The first point is astringency. Chava, according to Medrash Adam, had astringency. Not only do you not eat the tree, you cannot even touch it. Astringencies could be helpful, but they could be disastrous. It could be very dangerous. You create astringency, and then you say, oh, well, I see nothing happened with, when I touched a tree. I guess the whole thing is not a problem. Astringency could be dangerous. I always say, Humro, astringencies, Humra with Chachma. Every chumrah, every stringency one follows must be with Chachm until he talks it over with his wife, with his Rebbe. Whoever may be involved and may be affected by the chumrah, the stringency, talk it over first with someone, with a guide, to make sure. What does that have to do with our case of not seeing God's wonders? But what are some of the wonders that we have? We have the world of science, the world of Torah, and then we have the national world of the Jewish people. Let's take the world of the Jewish people, the wonder of the Jewish people coming back to Israel, building up a leading state, a leading country, where in every way we're ranked top 10 in terms of the military, the economy, the agriculture, high tech, water, everything. Desalinization, it's endless. How do people not see God's wonder there? of what the last 200 years consists of. How? So I'm wondering if it's the idea of astringency. Meaning, well, some of the people involved in bringing us back home or infirm, they were just Zionists and they were not religious Zionists and they had this cause and that motivation and, and therefore I have to stay away from this whole enterprise. And not only do I not appreciate what they did and their lives and their religious or lack of religiosity, but their whole institution of the Jewish state of Israel and in the gathering of exile no, 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 no. we don't talk about any of that stuff I'm being very stringent I'm just avoiding the topic and I'm staying in my dollar I'm sitting and learning I don't want to think about this whole topic so in your religiosity and your stringency you're staying away from one of God's greatest shows on earth that he's had in 2,000 years and just missing the boat and missing history another stringency the world of science. So the world of science is amazing. It's incredible. We're sending people to the moon and beyond, to Mars. And we're sending spaceships millions and millions of miles away. And the rover and the, the landing on Mars and be people one day there. It's incredible. And the discoveries. Awesome. 
But I'm stringent not to read any science because in the world of science, there's a lot of heresy. There's evolution, and evolution, some of the evolutionists don't believe in God. And they talk about 15 billion years, and I can't talk about any of this stuff. It's against Amasara. That's it. I'm closing off the whole world of science. I'm being stringent. So I'm wondering if Parsha Bracious is teaching us, watch out for the stringencies. Don't read any heresy. And first, talk it over with a rabbi, your rabbi. What is heresy? It's 15 billion years. Is that heresy or not? Maybe not. Study the topic. Or at least get talk from a rub. And have a list of what's heresy, what's not. Don't be stringent to throw everything out. Enjoy this wondrous world of God. He's a creator of it. He created science, biology, physics. It's all from him. So you have certain scientists saying some heretical things. So if it's really heretical, you cannot read them. But don't throw out the baby with the bathwater. Don't be so, quote, stringent. So I'm wondering if stringency is just like, was a downfall for Hava, is a downfall for us. We don't see some of the greatest chapters in God's shows. We're just missing it. In the world of science, or the world of history, Jewish history, just missing it. Of course, the stringencies. Then the next part we see is why did she eat the fruit? It was very tempting. It was beautiful to the eye. So I think that's an obvious reason why we don't see the wonder in creation and in Torah like we should. Because we follow our instincts and our taivas and just the base beauty in the world, but not in a sophisticated, proper way. We're running after things that give us pleasure. We're instinctual creatures. We find those things that give us the immediate gratification very appealing. And Hatava Hulainai is a major factor. And then another part is the Kvotova. We reject the good that God has given us. God showers us with brachos in our personal lives, in our national life, and in the world, and in the universe. And we focus in on the negatives and negatives and negatives. This hurts and that hurts, and I have this challenge, I have financial issues, and issues with my kids, whatever it may be. So that's a serious issue that needs to be dealt with, for sure. But because that, you just going to miss God's show, the greatest show on earth. So sometimes we have Kfoy Tova, and we just see the challenges and the bad pro and the problems that we have in the world. And then we just miss the show. So it could be these three reasons. A, unfortunate stringencies. B, we follow our repetitive and other instinctual desires, and we just don't let our personality develop to appreciate the other parts of God's world. Three, kfoy tova, where we don't see the beauty because we're so busy focusing and licking our wounds, which are real or imagined. And another point is Shara Bahina in Chavaz uh, of says, we're, we're creatures of habit. We just grow up with this world. We grow up with in gathering of exiles. We grow up with all the mystery of science and stuff. We just get so used to it. We don't even realize. That's the fourth reason as well. It's a shame. We should understand the Parsha Precious. Understand all these reasons. And try to make sense of the fact that we're not enthralled by God's creation like we should. And maybe the more we can understand our impediments in this area, the more we can truly appreciate the greatest show on earth that's going on 24-7. It is a show that could satisfy our mind, our psyche, our souls. And we should enjoy it every day. Shalom.